In most of the neighborhoods where the gyms are, there's no outlets for anybody. And uh, amateur boxing and boxing in general brings a lot of people off the streets. It brings a lot of different cultures and ethnicities together. It's a good bridge between people to understand that people are just people. No matter where you go, no matter what you do, no matter what they look at, everybody's on the same playing field in a boxing gym. And I think that's the most important thing about boxing. My name is Marty Jakubowski, part owner of Knuckleheads Boxing. I got into boxing at age nine in 1979. There was really nothing else going on in the neighborhood and all the kids went to the boxing gym and I just kind of followed. I wouldn't say I was a troublemaker at, at that point. Um, I was too young to do anything terrible, you know what I mean? So I think just because all the kids went there, I just kind of showed up there and I liked it right off the bat. Actually, my first six fights I lost. Not, uh, 10 years old I started and we had these things called inner club bouts where we would all meet at a certain gym and we would box uh, other local gyms and I lost my first six amateur fights. I don't remember being nervous my first couple fights. I remember after you start winning fights and after you start deciding this is what I really want to do, then there's some stakes involved. You know, you have to be good. But your first fight, first couple of fights, I don't, I don't think, to me, I don't think I was nervous. I just think it was what we did. I was 17, I had about 130 amateur fights and I had lost my, uh, my fight in the finals at the Chicago Golden Gloves in 1986 or 87. 1980, yeah, 86 or 87, I lost in the finals of the Golden Gloves. And I knew I was gonna get a shot at the 1988 Olympics. So I just decided I might as well get paid for this and turn pro in there. How many straight wins did you have when you started off as a pro? I believe it was 37 or 38. When did you lose your first fight as a pro and who was it against? December 13th, 1992 against Julio Cesar Chavez. In an age when fighters rarely have three bouts a year, Chavez has been fighting and beating at least one opponent every two months. Here he is, 23-year-old Marty Jakubowski out of Whiting, Indiana, 37-0 with eight knockouts, a half-inch height advantage for Jakubowski. The weight Chavez, 144, and Jakubowski really had to work hard to get to 142. If you don't have enough power to make Julio Cesar Chavez at least put his hands up when he comes in. Very impressive combination there by Jakubowski. Tough kid. Round Tough kid. six. Scheduled for 10. At one point, there's Chavez with a lunging right, and now Carlos Padilla. It would have been a miracle for me to pull off that fight, and I knew that going in, that he was the bigger, better fighter at the time, but it was a, you know, a great experience to fight the greatest fighter in the world at the time. At a young age, I was 22 or 23 years old, and uh, it was just a great experience, and it was a learning experience, and my career actually blossomed after that loss, where everybody, it was televised nationally on Showtime, so everybody kind of got a, got a glimpse of me and saw what I was made of, and I, my popularity soared after that. Boyle connecting, but he's running out of time. The USBA title was, a, was a ma one major title that I won and that I cherish. I won that in Philadelphia um, against Anthony Boyle. That was, that was one of my biggest, biggest and better fights. Then I got a world title fight a couple, a little while after that, where I fought uh, Miguel and Hug Gonzalez for the WBC lightweight title. I lost a 12 round decision, went back on the road and won some more fights and kind of learned my trade a little better and ended up going to Germany in 1996. And I lost a decision for the WBO title, a uh, 12 round decision in Germany to Arthur Gregorian. I think I just was burnt out. The, the, the desire and, you know, you, you can't do this forever. And I started when I was nine years old. And after all, all them fights, after, you know, 70 or 80 fights, I think I, I think I got tired of it. I did training. I trained at the UFC gyms and the LA boxing gyms in the area for years. And uh, when the pandemic hit, um, I was doing I was doing boxing training full time, and uh, all the gyms that I worked for closed down during the pandemic. So uh, we decided. Let's give it a shot and open our own gym after all these years. And so uh, we opened Knuckleheads. We're just seeing where we end up. You know, it's, it's, uh, 
it's it's a good it's a fun job for me. I enjoy it, but uh, you know I, I don't know if this is my final destination or not. Uh, we, we we do enjoy what we do, and we are making a living, and I am making a living out of it. But I we just we just want to grow our gym here and just make a make a nice place for people to work out and get a boxing experience. I like everybody that comes in the gym. I can't help myself but like most people that come in the gym. I mean, they, we've got something in common. They want to learn boxing. I teach boxing. It's easy to like people that come in the gym, and especially the people that stick around because they got character. You know what I mean? Most to so stick around and let and do our workouts here at the gym. It's not an easy workout, and to keep coming back day after day after day, it shows character, and I like characters, and we're full of them.